Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to apologize for our, our slightly late start today. We were running into a few small technical difficulties. Um, and just to speak to that, I would like to make note that we are not broadcasting from our usual controlled environments. Um, as you know, um, most of us are, well, all of us are working from home. So we're all broadcasting to you from our, our separate locations here around Chicagoland. Um, so if you could just be a little bit of patient if we run into any sort of technical or uh, connection or audio issues, um, we'll try and get through those, but we just wanted to make sure that we got this training out to everybody, um, despite the fact that we can't come from our usual controlled environment and space. Um, as we go through this session, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the questions section of the webinar um, module. Uh, if you are connected via the web app, there should be a little circle with a question in it. That's where you can access the question section. If you are using the GoToWebinar app, um, look for a dark gray toolbar uh, that has an orange box with a white arrow on it. And if you click on that orange box, you should be able to access your question pane. Please type any questions you have as we go along. But please note that we will be holding on questions until the end of the session. So type in your questions, be patient, and we will answer as many of them as we can at the end of the session. And then just to let you know, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, it usually takes us a couple of business days to get it edited, so please be patient. Um, but once it is available and ready, we will post it at sure.com slash webinars. Once again, that is sure.com slash webinars. Um, that is a great page to go to. You can see all of our upcoming sessions that have registration open. Um, and you can also view all of our past webinars there. So um, please feel free to go to sure.com slash webinars to see all all of our past sessions. There's a lot of great topics there covered across a lot of different audio topics. So please feel free to peruse all of our past webinars there. Um, all right. I think that wraps up with the housekeeping. Let's get into the learning. Please take it away, Chris. Is John Bowen on the line and unmuted? I am. Let's take yes. it away, John. <laughs> take it yeah, away, Take it away, John. John. <laughs> like uh, I how's said. How's everybody doing? Um, Cheryl, go ahead and click into that next slide. Uh, so here's here's the thing. Um, we have a couple of solutions for you within our portfolio for home conferencing. Um, the, at the top of the screen, you see our new Aonic wireless headphones, which we will be talking about. And those would connect via Bluetooth. Uh, we have some uh, digital microphones that are, are Motive line in our bottom left corner. And we have some wireless 215, uh, wired 215 headset earphones that I am currently speaking to you on. Um, you can also connect via laptops and cell phones. So right now, I'd like to introduce everybody on the panel. Um, so I am John Bourne, I'm a product manager at Sure here for our microphone portfolios. And I am speaking to you on a wired uh, SE215 Uni headset. Uh, it is a three and a half millimeter connection directly into my Lenovo laptop. Uh, and it has a four pin connector on there carrying earphones and a headset, which the mic is built into the cable. Um, they are uh, on fire sale actually at sure.com right now for uh, approximately $79. Um, and it's a great easy connection and they have a detachable earphone that you can connect to our wireless uh, options as well. So the earphones disconnect right at the cable there and uh, you can connect via Bluetooth with a BT2 module or wired and is a nice uh, uh, flexible portfolio for us. Um, hey Cheryl, John, I'm back. Hey, Cheryl, what are you speaking on? <laughs> Um, I believe we're going to talk about that a little well, bit Well, you know later. what? Let's let's do it this way. Did we? Uh, are we going to be able to talk to Gabriella or not? Well, we got through me. I am. Uh, yep. We got through me, and uh, we can go to Chris now since he's. Well, leaving. let's do this, uh, Cheryl. If you can go to the next slide, I think. Um, let's go to the next one here because I wanted to just mention one quick thing that, in addition to to sound quality, uh, you know, we talk about just intelligibility and clarity and things like that. One of the big problems that you get on a lot of conference calls is echo. And a lot of people are, you know, a little confused about how that happens. And it's it's really pretty simple that you send your audio like I'm talking now. It goes to your to somebody else's laptop on the other end, comes out of the loudspeaker and gets back into their microphone and then gets sent back to me. So if I'm hearing an echo, it's being caused on the other end by somebody else's computer. And one of the ways to break that chain is to use a uh, headset microphone where you've got a separate microphone and earpiece, because then there's no acoustic path 
from the loudspeaker back into the microphone. So that's why that's, that's the preferable solution. And especially if the room that you're in is noisy, uh, it can be a lot easier to hear and uh, you're, you're uh, likely to get better results uh, from that. So I just wanted to mention echo here. Um, Cheryl, why don't you go to the next slide? And so let's start off by talking to Gabriella because uh, she's just using her iPhone and standard Apple earbuds. Um, and we can hear what that solution sounds like because that's sort of like the ground zero where everybody can start. Uh, Gabriella, you there? Yes, I am. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep, we hear you fine. Fantastic. Well, I am calling near beautiful Niles, which is where our sure corporate headquarters are located. And as you mentioned, I'm just using my iPhone 10 with the wired earphones that came with the phone. So it's a pair of Apple earbuds with a mic and a lightning connector. And usually that's what most people use when we do conference calls and what have you. So this is how I sound. And you can, we can definitely tell that you're in a room. I mean, we can hear the reverberation. We can, you know, hear reflections off the walls and so forth. So it has a fair amount of that kind of tin can sound, which, you know, that's another artifact that we would love to get rid of because, uh, you know, as I always say, if you notice the sound, then that means there's something wrong with it. And that, that reverberant sound can be pretty distracting. Uh, for other people on a call. So we'd love to get rid of that if we possibly can. Um, okay, thanks, Gabriella. Of um, course. Cheryl, let's go to the next slide and uh, see who's on the list next. Ah, Dave. So Dave is sitting at home with his Lenovo laptop, which a lot of people at Shure use. Um, and he's just speaking uh, through the internal microphone. Dave, are you there? I am, Chris. Thank you. I'm actually at my home in Woodstock, Illinois and sit in my home office and uh, just talking off my Lenovo laptop mic. And we can hear some birds in the background there. It's, it sounds like you've got the window open. I do have the window open. Sorry about that, but nice day today. Yeah, that's that sort of uh, uh, shows one of demonstrates one of the drawbacks of the built in laptop microphone is that it's usually an omnidirectional microphone, so it's picking up sound from all directions. You can't really control it. Um, and second, you know, when they're putting together a laptop, uh, the number one thing on the list to spend money on is definitely not the microphone. So, you know, most of the money goes into the processor, the hard drive, the, you know, memory, the RAM, the screen, and, and things like that. Uh, you know, probably the microphone that's in most laptops doesn't cost more than a dime. Uh, and so it it usually does not give you great sound quality here. So, uh, Dave, um, what what is the weather like there in Woodstock? <laughs> oh, it's a nice day out. It rained last night, so we're getting over that. But uh, it's a beautiful day out there right now. And again, you're picking up a little bit of uh, room reverberation, so we can definitely hear some reflections from the room. So we know we know that you sound like you're sitting at home in a small room. Definitely has that sound to it. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. All right, now let's uh, go ahead to John Bourne. And uh, John, you're talking on the uh, SE215-UNI, and the UNI, I believe, stands for universal because that 3.5 connector is kind of as fundamental as it gets in audio, right? That is correct. I'm on a SC215 Uni uh, cable, and uh, that this cable can be used with uh, with a cell phone, like the iPhone, through the headset adapter, the Lightning to 3.5 headset adapter. Uh, it can also be used directly into my Lenovo laptop through the headset port on the side. Uh, it can also be used with Android devices that have... Uh, headphone ports on there. There's a switch on the back of the mic pod to switch between iPhone and uh, other non-iPhone devices. Um, and it's a great solution because the earphones detach uh, from the cable and you can use that with those other accessories that we carry in the Shure portfolio. And it's a long and it's a long-term play for you because uh, if the cable does ever break, you can just uh, either replace it under our warranty period or um, upgrade as you as we come out with more compatible devices. Yeah, I think that's one of the great things about uh, Shure earphones is the detachable cable design. Not only means you can replace a cable if it ever fails, but you can upgrade. So, you know, if you start with a 3.5 connector and later on you decide you uh, 
uh, need a you know cable with a different connector or you want uh, Bluetooth or something like that, you don't have to replace the earphones, which is the expensive part. That is correct. And I've uh, we just released some other compatible products in our Aonic line, uh, a true wireless portfolio uh, that also uses that same connection. So it's a it's a nice long term solution for people who are looking to migrate through through uh, the technology changes. Yep. All right. Thanks, John. We'll come back to you and talk more about products in just a minute. Uh, Cheryl, let's go ahead to the next slide, because speaking of wireless, what if you're just not a cable person? And you say, you know, I just really don't want to be connected. Um, or you you want to get dual use out of your earphones and say, you know, I want to use them when I'm running or on the treadmill or something like that. And the cable gets in the way. Uh, Gino, you're using the, uh, the brand new Aonic 215s. Is that right? That is absolutely correct. I am on the Aonic 215s, which feature the TW1 True Wireless Adapter. Uh, so as you can see, it's uh, an earphone there that uh, hooks over your ear, um, so it stays nice securely in place. I know in the past, I, I, I never uh, understood why people liked uh, uh, true wireless earphones um, that just kind of sit in your ear, not connected to anything, because they can easily fall out when you're jogging or running or doing whatever, you know, riding your bike. Um, but these are nice because, again, you can, you can see our true wireless adapter not only is compatible with the um, existing earphones so for example if uh john decided he wanted to go wireless uh he wouldn't even need to buy new 215s he could just disconnect them from the cable he already has and attach it to the tw1 adapter so again you can you can get the uh aonic 215s with the adapter and the earphone or just buy the adapters in and of itself um and that that works well and again there's a built-in microphone so you can hear me and uh, as it says on the slide i'm connected to my iphone but not making a phone call just directly through the GoToWebinar app in this application, um, which again, tends to give you better, much better audio than just calling in directly. So using the app with the TW1, uh, you got that. And now I'm wireless. So rather than having to stay on this webinar tethered to my desk, I am free to roam around my home office uh, and uh, get, get some steps in while I'm talking to you. Yeah, and it's uh, always amazing to me how far you can go uh, away from your phone. You know, you think that it's going to be great to just have the phone three feet away or six feet away, but then you realize, you know, you might be able to get as far as your kitchen, get a cup of coffee, you know, depends how your house is laid out, but, uh, you know, you can go over to the printer or something like that, and and you're never audibly disconnected. Right. That's correct. Yep. That sounds great. All right. Thanks, Gino. We appreciate it. Um, Cheryl, let's go to the next slide. All right, so that's me. So I'm sitting here on the uh, MV5 uh, USB microphone connected into the USB port on my Lenovo laptop. And uh, I am usually a wired mic kind of guy. You know, I'm usually just sitting here at the desk. And uh, so I love the MV5 because it has that kind of full-bodied microphone sound. You know, it's... it's uh, a different sort of fidelity. It's a little bit of a richer sound, um, you know, captures a little bit more natural voice. Um, and, but it's easy to use because you just plug it into the USB port on your computer and go. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, in a bit about some of the features of the MV5, but I wanted you to be able to hear how that sounds. Um, so Cheryl, let's go to the next slide here. And Ellen, it's you. Yeah. Um, so, so, what there's probably some people out of this, uh, what is it, 500 and some people who are listening today um, who say, well, I've already got a drawer full of microphones here in the house because I'm in a band or I'm in a, mus a musician or something. And what about a good way to connect one of your existing mics? Yes, um, that would be the MVI, which is what I'm currently using and one of my favorite products for connecting to my my laptop audio um, as Chris mentioned I might have a couple of mics. I might have five or six microphones hanging out behind me. Um, but today I opted to go with the tried and true SM58. Um, and yeah, it plugs directly into the back of the MVI. And there's also a headphone monitoring jack. Um, and it's super simple to use. And um, I hope, as you can tell, it really provides great audio. Um, I tend to sound the best on most of the conference calls that I get on because of my setup and so it's it's a really great way if you already have a microphone or are looking to invest in a microphone, um, it's a great way to get audio into your into most of your applications. 
Yeah. So for people who've already got a, a selection of mics or a standard mic uh, that they really want to use, or, you know, they want to record and use uh, the mic for, you know, recording themselves on guitar or some other non-voice application, uh, then you can use a mic that's ideal for that, you know, instead of being, um, you know, uh, limited to a specific voice microphone. So right. that's and great. Add, All right. And to add on to that, I'll just say that the MVI, the um, input jack on the back is a combo jack. So um, I am currently connected via an XLR, but it's also you can connect via quarter inch. So as Chris was saying, if you were wanting to also use it for a recording interface for your guitar, you could directly go in through that through that instrument cable input. Yep, and we'll talk a little bit more about the MVI in just a minute. Um, let's go to the next slide because I want to try something here with Dave because uh, Dave is at home and he's got his Lenovo laptop, but he also has an MV5. So Dave, let's see if we can hear you go directly from your laptop mic and then switch over to the MV5 for a black and white comparison. Hey, no problem. So I'm on my uh, uh, computer mic right now. And let me switch to my MV5. And I did that. And hopefully you heard the difference. But the MV5 gives you more directionality to your voice, for one thing, uh, and just makes it sound nicer for the other. And the amazing thing is, you know, there wasn't enough time for you to have gotten up and moved because audibly it sounded like you moved from 10 feet away from the microphone up to one foot away. I mean, it was like a dramatic distance change, uh, you know, or it sounded like it, but, but you didn't move, did you? No, I didn't. I just, uh, switched between the uh, mic on my computer to my, um, MV5, which is plugged into my USB side of the computer. So I didn't really make any movement. I just made a switch. Yep. So, you know, that I really think that's a great demo there because, you know, we're hearing, you know, same room, same person, same computer, same environment. The only thing that's changing is the microphone and it's, it is a night and day difference. So right there, I think, uh, you know, I would be convinced that uh, that's how I want to sound to the people that I'm on conference calls with. I'm going to do it one more time. So there's my computer mic and I'm talking on that right now and I'm going to switch it to the MV5. And now I'm on the MV5 and didn't move from my seat, just the click of the mouse. Yep, that's great. All right, thanks a lot, Dave. We appreciate it. Sure. All right, Cheryl. Um, oh, now this is something I want to bring John into the conversation here because we were talking about this earlier. And this is where it starts to get a little bit complicated. When you're choosing which mic you want to use or which mic you want to buy if you don't have one, um, you do need to consider what kind of device you're going to use it with uh, because um, there's some interesting uh, details about apps and which apps allow you to do different things. John, you want to talk about this a little bit? Absolutely. Um, so this is something that we definitely have uh, had a lot of questions about. So um, for home use, when you're using a laptop, like a Mac or a PC, um, all the products we're talking about today essentially work in a, in a laptop and PC uh, and Mac environment. Uh, so when we're talking related to um, mobile conferencing, so if you're on an iPhone or an Android, um, definitely you want to consider uh, sticking to three and a half millimeter, like the 215 Uni that I'm on today, or or a Bluetooth option from us, either the Aonic 215 or uh, the SE215 BT2. Um, conferencing applications on mobile devices um, do not generally allow you to use an external microphone uh, connected via either the lightning port or your USB-C port. So it's a limitation to uh, the conferencing app. And there's many of them, as you know, from Zoom to BlueJeans to Google Hangouts to, to all those conferencing products um, to WebEx. So I guess I just want to be clear that uh, mobile conferencing and desktop conferencing are, are different scenarios. Um, so uh, just be conscious of that, and uh, our USB products on the Motive line uh, work with vir with virtually any conferencing application uh, when you're on a laptop or a PC, but it does not work when you're on a mobile device. So uh, those are two different things you want to be aware of. 
Yeah, so definitely worth thinking ahead because I this was news to me because I always have used Skype on my laptop and have never tried using it on the phone or or an iPad or a, a tablet or anything like that. So this would have been a complete shock to me and I probably would have spent a long time trying to figure out why the heck won't this work? Yeah, so definitely just stick to uh, our wireless Bluetooth offerings when you're on a mobile device or our three and a half millimeter headset option. Uh, when you're on a your desktop device, our USB portfolio with Motive is a, is a great option, as you heard. Great. All right, Cheryl, let's go to the next slide here, and uh, let's start talking in just a little more detail about the products so uh, people can get an idea of uh, of what we're talking about here. So the, here's the, the 215 Uni uh, uh, earphones with inline microphone here. Um, and we we've, John, you and I, have spent a long time talking to people about sound isolating technology. We, I don't know, people don't know this. I've been at Shure forever. I actually hired John and it was a big mistake because he turned out to be smarter than me. And I hate when that happens. Uh, but we spent a lot of time going to Apple stores and other stores around the country and doing demonstrations of earphones for people. And the sound isolation of having these earphones in your ear uh, is really uh, an eye opener, or I guess it's an ear opener. Um, so just tell people, John, what are we talking about when we talk about sound isolation? Yeah, sound isolation is uh, all, all of our earphone products um, use sound isolation technology, which is essentially a, um, you know, an earplug uh, uh, that, that goes around a sleeve that goes around the earphone and uh, goes in your ear like an earplug does and blocks out the noise. So uh, we, we ship each of our products with a wide selection of sizes and types of sleeves that go on the earphones products and uh, allows you to be basically completely isolated from your environment up to uh, you know 30 dB of isolation. So three times the isolation of what you would kind of generally have. And it allows you to um, be immersed in your audio when you're just listening to audio and, and having a great listening experience, but also adding the microphone and the cable allows it to be a great communication tool for conferencing on a mobile device or into uh, products that have a three and a half port that you see there. Uh, so the sound isolation and the, and the earphone and the driver, the speaker technology we use is exceptionally great. And uh, it's a, a really nice tool to have in your bag and uh, for, for mobile use or, uh, or laptop use. And those sound isolating earphones are fantastic if you're on a call or, or you know, listening to a webinar like this or something like that, and you're in a little bit of a noisy area because you put those earphones in and it's like the outside world goes away and you can hear clearly. You don't have to turn the volume up real loud to compensate. It's, it's really fantastic. Yeah. And we've, um, it's great for commuters. Um, and it's, it's a great, we've even up, upgraded. Uh, we'll talk about that on that, on the true wireless options where we even add uh, ambience back in. So you can actually have uh, conversations with your earphones in uh, because we're using the microphones inside the the earphone now to uh, to to communicate. So uh, we'll talk about that in a couple slides. Yep. So let's go one slide ahead, Cheryl. Uh, I forgot what product is next. Oh, and it is the Aonic 215 True Wireless earphone. So the earphone itself is the same. What's different is that little portion that it's plugging into, and all the electronics is buried inside there. Um, John, let's talk a little bit about the microphones here, because obviously there is no inline microphone because there is no cable for it to be in line with. So how did we how did we deal with the microphone solution? Yeah, so inside the uh, the two the two fifteen true wires, there's actually two microphones embedded inside the um, the housing there, uh, and they kind of fit behind your ear and they form like a beam forming uh, uh, situation. So you get actually better isolation. The, the SE215 unit that I'm working, that I'm talking to is, is basically an omnidirectional microphone. So it's close to my mouth, but it picks up sound in all directions. Uh, by utilizing two mics inside the wireless product here, we can do a beam forming uh, technology where we can actually um, isolate that beam towards your mouth and reject a little bit more ambient noise. Um, and uh, you get great, great battery life on this. And then we actually use those microphones for an environment mode. So you can actually tap, there's a button on the side, you can tap the side of it uh, three times and you can turn it into environment mode. So you could actually leave your earphones in, it turns those microphones on, pipes it into your ears, and you can actually have conversations, um, whether you're on a flight and you wanna have a drink or you uh, wanna have a conversation on a 
with your with your friend without taking your earphones out. Um, the environment mo environment mode allows you to uh, hear the outside world without having to take your, your earphones out, which is convenient. And uh, talk a little bit about the controls here, because um, you know, in for me, how you you know uh, interact with it and uh, and you know answer a call and things like that is critical because that's kind of a productivity uh, tool uh, issue there. Absolutely, the, there is a button on each on each uh, at the back of each. Uh, uh, ear hook, and uh, one allow one push allows you to play and pause your music, or answer and end a call, or decline a call. Uh, two pushes, uh, I believe, give you gets you into um, uh, voice assist, and three clicks gets you into um, like voice assist, meaning like Siri. If you want to have do a command, um, and then three calls gets you into the ambience mode. So uh, all that stuff will eventually be customizable to your personal settings. Uh, we have a, a, a application that you can download for your phone called Sure Plus Play. Uh, we also have it for Android, and um, you can um, download that app. It's a free app, and it's a high-res music player, uh, so you can play back high-res files and organize your music. But also, it allows you to control settings of the uh, 215 True Wireless product, uh, like the button pushes. Uh, we're adding new features as we get this product out, so uh, you'll be able to control it and um, it's a really nice play app as well for storing your music if you're into a high high resolution audio file uh, playback. Great. All right, thanks, Cheryl. Let's go ahead one slide. And uh, okay, so John, you and I both know from doing earphone demos over the years that once in a while you run into someone who just says, I'm not an earphone person. I, I don't like the feeling of anything in my ear or I'd rather be able to like, take them off and set them down on the desk, you know, when I'm, when I don't need them. This product, Aonic 50 is made for those kinds of people, isn't it? Absolutely. This is a really exciting product for us. This is um, our first wireless headphone. Uh, and it does feature um, a lot of the features that the 215 True Wireless does, but uh, in a ridiculously good sounding headphone. Um, as you can imagine, we have a pretty amazing engineering team of audio engineers uh, and, uh, and um, and it's they uh, they really nailed nailed this audio quality on on this new product. So it has beam forming microphones as well, so you can get isolation on your calls. Um, there is a, a control uh, button panel on the back of the right pad that you allows you to do pairing and answer and activate calls and activate Siri. Uh, and then there's three different modes that you can set the headphone headphones into. There's um, just passive isolation, which is no no active isolation. And then you can turn on uh, noise canceling, active noise canceling technology, which is an ex extremely good job of uh, reducing outside noise. And then there is ambience mode or environment mode. Uh, and you can turn the microphones on and actually have conversations again. So, or blend between all many of those scenarios um, within our app. So you get 30 hours of battery life. Um, you can also use this as a wired headphone, as a traditional wired headphone. Um, right into a headphone port. Uh, and you can also use it uh, as a USB playback device on, on a laptop. So if you uh, are charging your device and you're charging it through a, a laptop port, um, you can uh, the laptop will recognize it as a playback USB device. And you can listen to, uh, to your music files through Spotify over the USB port uh, directly into your headphones uh, by not going wireless if you don't want to, or if you're charging and you still want to listen. So it's a really uh, phenomenal fitting headphone as well. Uh, the comfort on it is amazing. Um, we have two different colors, black and brown, uh, and they just started shipping uh, this week. And it's a great option for a, for a high-end Bluetooth headphone experience. Yeah, it's it's. I've put a pair of these on for a little while, and they are really comfortable. I mean, they're just the right blend of sort of soft and uh, you know lightweight, and you know contoured to your head and everything. They're just really comfortable to wear, so you could wear these for hours and uh, and enjoy it. So I think they're really going to be terrific. Um, all right, Cheryl, let's go to the next slide here. Uh, so the MV5 digital microphone, that's the one that I'm using. And, uh, you know, it's it 
some people call it the golf ball or something like that. It's kind of got a blend of modern and classic sure looks comes with a little stand there, which is what I've got uh, sitting on the desk right in front of my laptop. Um, it's a unidirectional microphone, so it's, you know, rejecting some of the room noise, which is one reason it sounds so good. Um, but John, let's talk a little bit about the DSP modes here. I'm using the vocal setting. What, what is that doing for me? Yeah, there's a little, um, digital signal processing this DSP, uh, inside built into the microphone. Um, we have a uh, vocal setting, which is enhances the voice frequencies and reduces the low frequencies a little bit. We have flat mode if we're just going to be doing like general recording um, as a recording option. And then we also have like a guitar mode in there if you're going to recording, like if you want to record instruments like acoustic guitars or piano. Um, so there's a little DSP setting in there, little DSP uh, presets that you can select on the back. There's a button for mode. Um, and uh, it is a great sounding directional mic, uh, pretty inexpensive, around $100. Uh, and it does include a USB A cable. Um, to go directly to uh, a US, traditional USB-A port. Uh, we do have a lightning cable in the box if you would like to record into your phone, uh, into your iPhone or iPod Touch. Um, you can record directly using our app. Um, there is a note on here, though, uh, in my head that uh, if you do have a Mac, a new MacBook, and you want to connect this to your new MacBook, it might only have a USB-C port on it. So you may need to pick up a USB-A to C adapter, um, which is plenty of them out there for a few dollars um but it works uh, as a typical usb a uh output in the box now let's talk uh, about the headphone jack real quick i'm uh, i have a pair of earphones plugged in so i'm listening directly through those earphones um but i could be using my laptop speaker if i wanted to if i preferred not to have any earphones on and just have the uh the microphone alone and that would work you know just fine unless i was maybe in a very a reflective room where the sound was bouncing off and getting back in the microphone. But you do have uh, some control over using that if you want to. Yeah, I use the MV5 um, in, a, in a, for a lot of conference calls now. Um, and uh, I actually take the headphone out and I, and I just have a little headphone splitter and I split it to like a little Bluetooth uh, powered speaker that I have that has an eighth inch port on it. And um, and then I also split it to a pair of earphones. So uh, when I don't want to wear earphones while I'm on the call, I can just turn my little Bluetooth speaker on, and then I have a speaker option as well. Um, you know, most conferencing apps uh, allow you to select your input and your output device separately. So uh, you can select like the MV5 as an input device, and then your laptop speakers or another speaker as, a, as an output device. But when you first plug the MB5 in, it does take over as both an input and output device. Um, so the initial preference uh, for most people is using headphones, but then you can always hook that headphone port up to an external speaker if you want. Great. All right, Cheryl, let's go to the next slide here. Uh, and this one, the MV51, uh, nobody on the call today happened to be speaking through one of these, um, but it's a bit of a step up from the MV5. Uh, it's a little bit larger, has a slightly larger microphone uh, transducer in it, so the sound is even a little bit better than the MV5. Uh, but now you've got five DSP modes instead of three, so in addition to the speech, uh, there's a separate one for speech and singing vocals, um, and then a separate setting for recording louder instruments. So if you also wanted to use the mic to uh, record, you know, playing drums or something like that, that loud setting is really going to uh, help out. Um, also, it is kind of nice that the controls are all on the front with the MV51, so it's really quick and easy to make adjustments. Um, you still have the headphone jack. I've always thought the kickstand is like a, a, a hidden feature because a lot of people, John, don't know what that kickstand does. I mean, you can obviously use it to hold the mic up like that, but tell people about the little end portion of that kickstand. Yeah, that little rubber foot on the back of the kickstand, uh, you can unscrew and uh, connect it to a standard uh, mic stand. Um, and if you have if you're not a guy and you have a mic stand or a desktop stand or, or a boom tripod stand, uh, you can you can screw that mic, the whole mic, right onto the back of it. And uh, if you want to get your uh, mic, if you want to get your microphone off your desktop, 
or have it come in between your two screens or something. It's a nice convenient way to put it on a standard mic stand. Um, I do I do like the touch panel control on here, um, having easy access to it. It's a it's the identical panel that we use on the uh, MVI. Uh, so there's easy access to mic mute, um, and then easy access to your headphone volume uh, by just touching the. It's a capacitance touch panel, and then you can cycle through the modes if you're doing uh, different different recordings. But it's a large diaphragm uh, studio condenser mic in there. It's a one inch diaphragm and it, it does sound really, really good. Um, and the thing is built like a tank. It's an all metal construction and it weighs about two pounds, I think. <laughs> so so it is a, it's a nice upgrade for, uh, for a lot of things beyond conferencing. All right, Cheryl, let's go one slide ahead and uh, look at the MVI because um, this is the solution for people that already have some microphones at home. And there you can see the rear of it and you see that combo connector. So you could plug in a professional microphone or some other source with a quarter inch jack or something like that. Um, the thing that always blows me away is that this thing even provides phantom power. So if you've got a really nice studio condenser microphone that needs phantom power, you can plug that in here and it'll work just fine. And uh, so if you want to use, um, you know, if you've ever thought, boy, I wish I had a way to connect Source X into my laptop, um, this is a great way to do it because you could take the output of a mixing console, you could take an individual microphone, you know, you could do pretty much whatever you want and, uh, and control it with a nice level control uh, before you go into your laptop. Uh, so this makes a great solution for somebody who wants to alternate between doing some speech stuff like conferencing, maybe also do some recording. Um, and uh, this is uh, the fact that there's a headphone jack on the unit here for all these microphones and, and for the MVI is really important for a musician. So uh, Cheryl, for instance, if you wanted to record some vocal tracks um, of yourself, but you wanted to listen to an instrumental track and sing along with it, that's this is what the MBI really shines for, right? Yes, indeed. And actually, I have used it um, since we've gone into lockdown for that exact purpose. Because through that earphone jack, you're hearing yourself and the uh, instrument track uh, coming off the computer. You're hearing it in real time. Uh, so you can sing along and, you know, or play along or whatever it is you're doing uh, without a lot of uh, latency screwing up your timing and everything like that. So that's why you don't want to just use the uh, earphone jack that's on the laptop because that signal might be delayed compared to what you're recording. And so your, your, your synchronization is not going to be there. So this just makes it a lot easier to deal with that. Most definitely. All right, let's go and, to the uh, next. Real quick, Chris, on that. Um, there's also a, um, fan of the, on the phantom powered side of things, if you're doing any mobile production and you're finding yourself needing to produce content and then edit it later, the MVI is a great solution for um, even plugging in like a lavalier mic, a wired lavalier mic into the XLR port into your phone. Um, you can, um, it actually provides uh, 12 volts of phantom power uh, when you're connected to a lightning device like an iPhone. So it even can do, um, it's a really nice tool to have uh, in, your, in your bag if you, need to, if you need to hook up a lab or an interview mic or something uh, into your phone or into a laptop. Uh, it also is compatible with some Android devices as well, a small list, but, um, but it, it's a really great tool to have for, for mobile production if you need to create content uh, during this time, so. Yes, yeah, so if you want to do some, uh, you know, interviews of people or, uh, you know, uh, uh, do, uh, you know, with a handheld mic, do a journalism style or, you know, kind of do a 60 minutes style with a lavalier or something like that. This is a great way to take that source and get it either into your phone or your tablet or, or laptop, you know, whatever is easiest for you to work with. Yeah, we had a few requests for even like, how do I hook up a, just a wireless lavalier mic for you know, my house of worship or something. Um, you can plug the back of a wireless receiver right into this device and uh, go wirelessly with a belt pack if you have an old wireless system laying around. So it's a really nice tool to, to have. Yep, and it's this the MVI is powered from the USB connection or the lightning connection. So no batteries, no external 12 volt wall wart, anything like that. Just really clean and simple. 
Okay, Cheryl, let's go ahead to the next slide here. Ah, so I wanted to include this, John, because um, this is something that some people have run into here and there, and uh, I've had it happen once, and I never knew why, and this explains it. So uh, if you've ever been on a call and people say, you sound like Darth Vader, why is your voice so deep? Uh, you know, and it, it, it seems to be a random problem. There is a reason for it. So let's talk about why this happens and how you can fix it. Yeah, it's so this is typical, uh, for this only applies if you're using a USB device, uh, like a motive product on a PC. Uh, if you have a Mac, this does not apply to you. Uh, uh and if you're on a mobile device, it does not apply to you. So if you're on a PC using windows, um, and a USB audio device, like many of our Motive products, frankly, or any USB audio device, uh, this applies to any USB audio microphone. Um, you can get a you can get a pitch shift if if the sample rates are not synchronized at, from the recording and the playback tab. Um, so uh, this is not something that you will really experience, but it is something that the other end of a conference call will experience. Uh, occasionally, you can experience it when it's mismatched on, on your side and their side, and then you can get some weird chipmunk sounds. Um, but uh, the way to fix this is, is you need to go into your sound, your sound panel control settings into the advanced tab and align your sample rates. Um, it will happen if your sample rates are uh, either, either mismatched 44.1 and the playback is 48, or if the playback is 48 and your recording is 44.1, um, you can sound like Darth Vader, which is a cool effect, I will say, but not something you really want to have on a conference call. So if you're getting a couple weird looks or you might want to just check in uh, with, with somebody on the far end, like, hey, do I sound okay through this new USB product? Um, and they say, yeah, then you're good to go. Um, it, the, it's, a, it's kind of a flaw within, the, within Windows that you, it allows you to the ability to have mismatched sample rates. So it's just something you need to go into your settings uh, as we outline here to check. And it is something that can change if you plug in the microphone into a different USB port uh, at a different time. So something you want to keep an eye on for PC use of USB devices. And and that's what makes it such a fun problem because sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, right? It, it adds an element of excitement. <laughs> Yeah, I wish it was something that we could easily fix, but it is a kind of an inherent flaw to the USB protocol on PCs. Uh, we are looking at maybe addressing that with firmware updates on our side, but uh, with the current product offerings that we have, um, this is something you want to keep an eye on. Yep. Okay. Good to know. So that you can be the smart one. Um, so there's a link there on this page that, uh, you know, will take you to a landing page that kind of talks more about these products if you want to find some more information. So definitely uh, feel free to check out our website and learn a little bit more there. Um, but Cheryl, with 500 people, uh, we've got to have a couple of questions, right? Hey, can I ask one first? This is Dave. Sure, Dave. Hey, I always get a question because I have all of these, you know, I've got a headset that I wear when I'm in a noisy environment. I got earphones because the headset once in a while, you know, gets tiresome from wearing. You know, if I'm a, a new user, I'm new to working from home, how do I select the right product for myself? Well, that's a great question. I think uh, it comes down to a combination of what kind of device you're going to be do using the most, you know, whether it's phone or tablet or laptop or whatever. And are you using some sort of application on those? And what are, what, what are the allowances for that application? And then uh, third, what just what's comfortable for you? You know, some people uh, like to wear earphones and headphones because they're maybe switching back and forth between uh, you know, participating in a call or listening to music or something like that, or editing a video or whatever. Um, other people, you know, the microphone is just for conference calls, so they don't really uh, need it for any other use. So I would think about what's comfortable for you physically and uh, what your environment's like, how noisy it is. Are you trying to really block out what's going around? You know, the kids are making noise or something. Um, or is, are you in a, a more quiet place where you don't have to worry about that? I think those are the big three I'd consider. Yeah. And personally for me, um, I'm finding myself, uh, when I'm on dedicated conference calls, 
in my, in my pseudo home office card table bedroom, <laughs> um, I, uh, I'm finding myself wanting to have, uh, not wanting to wear a headset now that I'm in like week three of this. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm using a motive microphone connected to an external little Bluetooth speaker. And uh, that seems to give me some relief. When I'm on a mobile device, I'm definitely finding myself wanting to have like a Aonic 215 Bluetooth solution uh, so that I can still manage my beautiful children, but still possibly be listening on a conference call. So, uh, so I'm finding I actually need a couple solutions and, uh, uh, just out of the convenience and environments that I'm finding myself trying to work and uh, manage all the new things that we're all managing. That's great. Uh, Cheryl, do we have any other questions? We have a lot of questions. So uh, before we dive in, I just want to take a level check from the presenters and make sure that they can stick around. We might go a little bit long. Does that work for uh, mainly Chris and um, John? Okay yeah, for me. Fine. All right, then let's dive right in. All right, first question. Um, can you talk a little bit about avoiding ambient kid and family sounds? Yeah, yeah that's a good one. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> um, I have three kids, and uh, the sounds are everywhere. Um, on, this, on the far end, you definitely want to go with a directional microphone. So a Motive product, I would probably mostly recommend the MV5. Um, if you're going to be on a laptop um, or a desktop, um, you know, from a from a mobile use standpoint, um, what some of the new Aonix uh, products that have the beam forming technology will help isolate your voice in those calls. If you need isolation from your children, uh, then definitely using a pair of our earphones uh, in the back of a motive mic or using a, our 215 portfolio, either as a true wireless solution or um, as the wired solution so that you can get the isolation you need is a, is a great tool. So I've needed both ends of isolation in many situations on my side. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes it's, it's not that people on the call hear what's going on in your house. It's that you hear it and you think, what was that? Sure. And uh, having some isolation, you know, blocking your ears off from what's going on in the rest of the house can sometimes be a good thing for that reason. Yeah, I would say that the biggest isolation from from in terms of you being isolated for your callers from your children is probably what Cheryl has right now, which is a, a dynamic microphone like an SM58, which is less sensitive than a condenser uh, into our MVI is probably going to and having that position as close to you as possible is going to give your callers the most isolation from your environment. I'll uh, add on to that. Um, in my work from home situation, my husband is a drum instructor and he has been teaching drums in the basement. And I'm fortunate enough that I may at least be able to put a floor in between us and I'm on the second floor. Um, however, um, he has been playing and I can hear it in the background. But so far, none of my calls have said that they could hear any of the drums. So that's amazing. I have not heard any drums at all during this entire day. Well, there haven't been any drums yet today. He usually starts a little bit later, but there were some birds screaming because I actually own birds and I'm hoping you didn't hear that. So, <laughs> Nope, didn't hear that either. The power of a directional dynamic microphone. Yep. <laughs> all right, next question. Um, I have a pair of Shure SE215 BT1 headphones, but I never know how I should wear them if I'm using the microphone. Should I put it behind my head or under my neck? I think the answer to that is if you're using the microphone, you want it uh, under your neck. You want it in the front. Um, you'll pick up a little bit when it's behind your head, but not as much as you will in the front. Your your head is fairly directional and the, your voice comes out the front, but not, not as much comes out the back and it's quite muffled back there. So uh, for good intelligibility, you'll want the microphone uh, module in the front somewhere. Great. And since somebody brought up our, our BT products, um, I'm going to jump ahead to this question um, and let John take it. Uh, curious about the sound quality via Bluetooth versus hardwired. Can you speak a little bit to that, John? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, blue, so the Bluetooth Kodak, when you're using as a communication device, um, is, is limiting in its bandwidth. Um, so we are kind of limited to, as when you're using a Bluetooth product as a communication tool, you're kind of limited to, uh, one, the microphone, how good the microphones are, but two, really the codec that Bluetooth uses. Uh, we, we use Bluetooth 5 in our more recent products, which is which is um, a little bit better than the traditional Bluetooth 4 spec. 
uh, from a from a protocol. So, um, you know, I think I think as we are getting better and as Bluetooth is getting better, we are very uh, in tune with the Bluetooth um, Alliance group, um, and we are constantly driving better microphone specifications with them. Uh, but it is definitely getting better in our more recent products of the in the Aonic portfolio. Yeah, and I'm just going to expand on that and say definitely um, from a microphone standpoint, um, probably our wired 215s and our Aonic uh, 215s are going to give you sort of the better microphone experience um, than a BT2 and then definitely from a BT1. Okay, next question. This one's a little centric to a separate product, so I'm not sure if we can answer it, but I'll present it to the team. Um, is it true that you cannot use earbuds that have a mic the microphone on the cable with your in-ear system, such as Aviom, due to the three conductors on the jack itself, which is not compatible with the two-conductor design on the he Aviom headphone output? That sounds correct. Um, I believe the Aviom system is strictly a a headphone stereo output. It does not carry a microphone input. Um, so therefore, uh, if you're looking at your three and a half millimeter jack, and if you see um, two lines on it, that would be a, a stereo. If you see three lines on it, that would be a headset. So the two are compatible with each other, but um, a headset, it can be used as a headphone, but it can't be the other way around. Great, okay. A couple of questions next. I'm going to loop them together about the Aonic 215s. Um, do they have a mic and where is it located? They do have a mic and it is located on the lower part of the, um, the over ear hook, you know, the little black part that we showed. So there's sort of like a teardrop end and there's actually a, uh, a microphone on each side that's used for the environment pickup. And the one on the right side is used for uh, voice for uh, calls. Yeah, there's actually two mics. Um, there's actually two mics in each pod. Uh, well, on the right side, there's two mics to create that beam forming. Uh, and then on the left side, there is a, a single mic to do the environment mode. So there's a few mics in those things, and, and there, there's tiny little gaps inside the, the housing to uh, as an inlet for those microphones. Okay. Next question. Has Sure added or plan to add any Bluetooth 5 capabilities with extended range beyond 30 feet? So we run on our Bluetooth 5 spec right now, which I think our current specification might be 30 to 60 feet. Um, so we are uh, we are deploying the most recent Bluetooth spec that we can in our most recent Aonic products. Um, we are definitely part of the Bluetooth Alliance, like I spoke before, on driving better specifications uh, on the Bluetooth protocol. But uh, we are also running a couple other uh, high def audio codecs like Aptex and stuff like that on our Aonic portfolio as well. So we are kind of at the at the limit of our Bluetooth specification. And I will say the Aonic TW1 and the headphone has pretty impressive range. Um, I've been able to go all the way to my basement on my split level house and still be on a call. So it is is pretty, pretty good. Nice. And usually, John, there's a trade-off between range with these types of devices between range and battery life because if you're going farther that typically requires more power which probably is going to you know reduce your battery life somewhat and that's usually something that people don't want to deal with or it means the device has to be bigger which nobody ever wants yeah i would say that that does affect and also your environment of how many other bluetooth devices are around you if you're on a subway and there's 500 people listening to Bluetooth things, your range is definitely going to be different than if you're in your house by yourself and you just connect it to your laptop. Okay. Um, I have about four questions of the exact same question that came in at pretty much the same time, and they're all for you, Chris. <clears throat> How close are you to the MV5? How close am I? I am about, I will say, eight inches from the MV5. So I'm sitting at a desk with the laptop there in front of me. So it's at, at the distance where I'd be able to type on it comfortably. And there's maybe 
oh, I'd say four inches, five inches or so between the front edge of the laptop and the edge of the table. And in that little gap, that's where I've got the MV5 sitting. Um, I've also used it on calls where um, if I'm going to be doing a lot more typing during the call, I'll put it over on the side of the laptop and that works well too. It's not quite as close, but it still works just great uh, from there as well. Great. Okay. Next question. Is the Sure MV5 only effective for speaking closely into, or can it be used in a conference room situation and will it pick up a group? Uh, it could pick up a group. I would say it is a cardioid pattern. So you've got about 120 or 130 degree angle to work with. Um, I would say you're probably okay using it for two people, maybe three, you know, if, if they were all sitting on the same side of the table. Um, but I don't think it would be wide enough to get everybody around a table because if it's a round table, then some people are on the back side of the microphone. So you'd have to move the mic to pick them up and then that's going to generate some noise when you when you grab it so it's more of an individual or maybe two-person mic solution than a conference table solution yeah and we do have um more huddle room solutions in our uh mx portfolio that might be good solutions uh we have a little boundary array mic that is perfect for like four to four to six people uh that uses um a dante output to go into um various other conferencing products that we have. So we definitely have a, a broad selection of of uh, boardroom, conference room products within our portfolio. Great. Okay, this next one's for me. When using the SM58, how close is the mic to the mouth? Um, well, I am a close talker and I also like to get the proximity effect going. Um, so I tend to actually like to stay close to the mic. I like to go about two to three inches, but I could jump up the gain and possibly move back a little bit and you should still probably be able to hear me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would say about that one. Okay. Um, this next one is once again about how close are we to our mics? I think we answered that one. Okay. Next question here. Uh, will sure be sending attendees a link to the recording. I'd love to send this recording to, for training to my sales team. Thanks. Um, yes, uh, all of our webinars are recorded. Um, we do edit them and then we post them um, both on YouTube and sure.com slash webinars. Um, and I will also be holding off on the confirmation emails, the follow-up emails so that I can include the recording link when it's available. So just watch for that confirmation email and there should be a link to this session there. Okay, uh, next question. How do the Aonic 215 compare to Apple AirPods Pro and PowerBeats Pro? That's, that's a, a good, good question. question. <laughs> um, that's a very good question. Uh, I am I have not directly compared those products, but I will say um, that the Aonic two fifteen TW one is a exceptionally great product. Um, we we the Beats we know the Beats came out maybe about six months ago before we did, and we that kind of validated that our our industrial design is very desired. Uh, they are extremely secure. They are extremely comfortable. Uh, they sound great. Uh, we we have dedicated he headphone amplifiers uh, that we've specified and designed inside each each pod. Um, we have beam forming mics. We have environment mode. So uh, it's a really top notch solution as a true wireless offering. Um, and uh, I think uh, as the reviews start coming in, I think uh, it will go head to head with both of those products. Great. Plus the uh, interchangeable sleeves in different materials and sizes, uh, you know, it's it's amazing how personal the inside of your ear is and, and what fits somebody else doesn't always fit you. And so being able to interchange those things makes a world of difference in how comfortable and how usable they are on a day-to-day -day basis. And I, I don't think the Apple has any kind of interchangeable sleeves on it. I believe yeah, the, the, yeah, the biggest thing is this sound isolation compared to the Apple Pro. Uh, you get great isolation, um, better isolation than the, than the AirPod Pro in terms of your environment isolation. So you can have a much better listening experience. Um, great. Uh, next question is for me. Is the SM58 held up to the mouth or on a desktop mic stand? I currently do have it on a mic stand, and I would probably advise using a desk stand, uh, a desktop stand of some kind. Um, while the while the SM58 is great at at um, 
mitigating handling noise, you still might get a little bit more noise. Um, and plus, it's also something I don't have to worry about. So I would advise using a stand. Um, the next question is, can we hear the MV51? And I will answer that. Um, unfortunately, none of the panelists were able to bring home an MV51 um, when when we all left the offices. I can picture in my mind the MV51 that is sitting at my desk at, in the office, and I cannot get to it. Um, so apologies that we didn't have it here. But it is going to sound, especially when you take into account the um, GoToWebinar codex, it probably would sound very, very similar to the MV5. Okay, let's see. We talked about that in the presentation. Um, next question. Does the lightning limitation include the 3.5 millimeter to lightning adapter? If so, then iPhone users can only use Bluetooth? Uh, yes, because the newer iPhones do not have the 3.5 millimeter connector, only your options are only Bluetooth or Lightning. No, they're, so, they're 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 speaking of the. I think they're talking about the dongle. There's a there's a Lightning to headphone jack dongle, and I believe and John, maybe you can you can answer this or not. But I am pretty sure that using a wired two fifteen with that dongle, the mic will be able to be used. Did we lose John? Oh, I don't know. Maybe we did. Hey, Cheryl, I can answer that. I've got. Well, I've got the old 215 wired, not the new Ionic ones. Mm -hmm. And I use the dongle and I can talk on my iPhone with that dongle. Great. So, yes. So, when using a wired Uni 215 with the lightning to earphone adapter, the mic on the Uni 215s will work. Okay. Let's see. Um, can you get an adapter that goes from XLR to 8th inch, allowing you to, to use a regular mic on the headphone input of an iPhone? Um, it would have to be not just 3.5, but 3.5. That is the four conductor version, the tip ring ring sleeve. Um, I don't know if that's available. So theoretically that might work, but I haven't seen one. So I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to say yes until we'd actually tried it. I think there might be some adapters um, from some other manufacturers that that do that. However, the key thing that you need to know is that they do involve some sort of adapter, um, some sort of adapter interface solution to them. Um, just directly a cable that would go from a microphone into a headphone jack is not going to work. Um, so you would definitely need some sort of adapter. Yeah, because a lot of times with Apple products, it's not just the physical connection. There's something electronic happening also. And so that means there usually needs to be some little circuit in the connector to enable it to work. So it's not just like soldering up the right cable and connectors. Great. Okay, next question. Uh, do you recommend the X2U for use as a simple USB interface for those who own a hardwired mic already? So in addition to the MVI. Uh, that's a good question. I, I haven't used an X2U for a while. I mean, it would certainly work for recording. I haven't tried it with, um, any conferencing apps, so I don't know if there's a compatibility issue. And unfortunately, John is probably the one who would know the answer to this. Um, um I believe, and this is going back a while from when I first started doing webinars, but I did with the go to webinar, go to meeting, um, I did use an X2U uh, originally, and it worked. So I don't know if anything has changed there, um, but I'm pretty sure an X2U is going to be similar in in terms of how it interacts as the MVI. Yep. And, you know, that's probably a great place to plug our award-winning applications engineering department uh, who does tech support. Um, you could give them a call and probably ask them that question and, and get a good answer. They, uh, they are, you know, working the phones even remotely, so you can still get technical help. And this is exactly the kind of question that they're used to answering. Yes. And um, just just I'm going to tag on to that because it's we're probably not we're going to go for a little bit longer. We're definitely not going to get through all of these questions. I have a lot still pending. Um, so if we don't get to your question, you can go to sure.com slash contact and fill out the form there to get to open up a ticket with our support team and they can answer every question under the sun for the most part about audio. So uh, sure.com slash contact to open up a support ticket with our team. Okay, next question. Uh, do all 215s have detachable cables? Yes, they do. All of the Sure SE 215s do have that detachable cable and can be used with any of the Sure created MMCX cable adapters and accessories. 
Okay, next question. Um, can I plug my SE, my 425 earbuds with the 215 hardware and use those drivers? Um, I think what you're asking, I, 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 I think what you're asking is if you can use the same cables with 425s as you can 215s. And the answer is yes. Um, as I just stated, all of our MMCX accessories and adapter cables um, work across the Sure line. Um, with the Aonic, uh, the true wireless adapters, um, there are some adjustments you can make in the free Sure Plus Play app um, just to make sure that uh, the drive level is equal to the headphones you're using. Um, but yes, across the board, all of our MMCX connectors and cables work with all of our earphones. Um, okay, let's see. Um, just to reiterate, somebody asked, the Aonic 50 does have a microphone. It does indeed have a microphone, a built-in microphone. Okay, let's see. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to sift through these. Okay. <clears throat> Can an MV5 be used with regular factory iPhone headphones with an inline mic? Would the headphone mic interfere or impede at all with the MV5? Did I, did I lose Chris? <laughs> I think I've lost everyone. I think I am left all alone on this webinar. Um, I am pretty sure that um, if you use um, earphones that have a, an inline cable with a motive device, the motive mic will take control of the mic controls. Um, so I think you should be fine. But once again, I would reach out to our support team at sure.com slash support. Um, and with that, I'm going to wrap things up today. I know there's a lot of questions we didn't get to, so many, many apologies if we didn't get to your question. Please feel free to reach out to our support team at sure.com slash contact, and they'll be able to answer any questions you have. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you a little learned, a learned a little something, and we hope to see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.